Zune intrigues me, and I kind of want to ask her. But I can't really ask about something that personal. Okay? Hmm. I can't come up with anything else to ask, so I just focus on my food while the girls talk between themselves. Misha and Shizune sign back and forth very animatedly, throwing sideways glances at me, but Misha refrained from translating. <laughs> Maybe they are talking about the secret girl stuff. I quickly notice the conversation inside is not enough to fill silence. We arrive in the classroom early, but we're not the first. That dark-haired girl I noticed before slumped over her desk at the last row. She jumps a little when Misha crashes into the room with the elegance of She shrinks deeper into her seat. I can feel her tension all the way from as if she was slowly turning into stone just from our presence. Misha and Shizuna either don't notice or don't mind, as they walk directly past her to the converse. I'm left wondering about her even when the classroom slowly fills with the other students and finally the team. Getting into the rhythm of the school feels strange, if my brain remembers how this is done, but my body doesn't. Towards the end of the class, I start yawning and counting the minutes. I shouldn't be this tired on my first Maybe it's the long time spent in the hospital that I feel like this. I'm even feeling physically weak and lifeless. Before long, the final bell rings. School is finally over for the day. Beside me, Misha and Shizune are having a short conversation after a bit of deliberation. Uh, turn. Dot dot dot. Unfortunately, we can't stay and show you around today, Jan. Gotta hurry up. Ready, since there is a lot of work for us. Dot dot dot. You'll find your way around here. I'm sure of it. Oh, wait. The teacher said I'd have to see the nurse. Where do I have to go? That's so. We can at least show you that much. Come on, the nurses have their own building, so we have to go outside. We join the flow of students making their way down the stairwell outside. Girls pointing out their classrooms and hallways. Up. When we get outside, the girls make their way to the smaller building right, ne right next to the Built in the same style, so it looks like it's actually a part of the main. Dot dot dot. This is the auxiliary building. Lots of official and important stuff inside, like the Yaku Foundation office and all the nurses' offices. They even have a swimming pool. How is that official? Dot dot dot. Don't be silly, Chan. It's for physical therapy, of course. Anyway, all the nursing staff facilities are in there too. Head nurse's office is on the first floor. You'll be fine from here, right? We'll be going then. Tomorrow. Yeah, thanks. Bye. Whole building for stuff that has nothing to do with the actual education. I guess it's necessary. I walk in hoping that this really will be only a quick visit like this. On a white door on the left is a cross with the text, Head Nurse. And a nameplate. A voice from inside responds to my knock almost immediately. Can't quite make it up. It sounded a bit like an invitation to open the door, so I invite myself for The room is not large and it smells strange. A friendly looking man turns around on his office chair to face me as a desk is neat and tidy, but the bin under the table is overflowing with used medical utensils, and there are at least a dozen coffee cups bring on the desk. Hello there. What did I do for you today? He is a young looking and sort of rugged, but the dimples on his cheeks wash that impression away. Er, are you the nurse? He smiles like a person who has heard this very same question hundreds of times. Why, yes I am. That's so on the door, no? You can call me by my name, or just the nurse. What else? Of course I shake off my confusion, realizing I probably should grab his extended hand. 
Handshake is rather firm and friendly. Right. I'm a new student and my homeroom teacher told me to come and meet. My name is Hassan Nakai. His eyes light up with revelation and he snaps his fingers. Oh, you're that, Nakai. I was just reading your file in the morning. Some kind of chronic arrhythmia. Dated congenital heart muscle deficiency, right? This gesture he, he gestures me to sit down, make an armchair in front of his desk. Yes. Good, but you've probably been briefed about the school enough, so I'll go just go over this quickly. You have all kinds of available, mostly physical therapy and such. There's always someone from my staff around, even at night, so never hesitate to call us if there is a problem. Famous 24-hour nursing staff. Wow, this is like a hospital. Well, not exactly, since we don't do brain surgery here. This joke feels so out of place, but I'm left thinking why he even said it. Yeah. Just that it's really weird to have so many medical people out of school. You'll get used to it. I'm not so sure of that myself, but I don't let the nurse know it. Now, let me just find your file again. While he searches for something from his computer and shuffles stacks of paper around, let my gaze wander around the room. It's the epitome of generic, I'd like to say. Beige walls and ceilings, dark gray laminate flooring, and all the equipment you'd expect from Chris's office. Even the ridiculous educational posters are hanging up, reminding me to eat properly three times a day and from all the food groups. Smiling, Nurse draws a thick file from a stack of similar, similarly thick files and opens it. You, you already have medication for the arrhythmia. Just remember to take your pills every morning, evening, every morning and evening, or it won't be much help. Apart from that, do any sport, crash stuff like, I don't know, boxing. He grins to his own joke, but I don't. I, I played soccer occasionally. Classmates. Alright, I'm afraid I'm going to have to recommend you refrain from doing that. At least for the time being. Oh. My lack of reaction makes him raise an eyebrow, but really, I'm not too bothered by him forbidding me to kick a ball around. Guess I never did it out of burning passion. Just to have something to do. Any kind of... Concussion might be very dangerous to hurt, and risking another attack is not a good idea. Was the previous one caused by a sudden concussion? Yes. There is no mention of the cause in your papers. Er, not exactly. I sidestep the question acceptably, and he glances at me over his papers with a more serious expression on his face. Yo, you need to keep your body healthy. Some exercise, what do you? You have physical therapy and such available, as I said. I don't think you really need such heavy measures. Just get some light exercise regularly. Brisk, wa brisk walks or even light jogging, dumping rope, that sort of thing. Swimming, maybe. There's a pool here. I was told. You were? Very good. At any rate, and I'm sure you've been told this before, you just need to take care not to overexert yourself. He wags his finger to emphasize the point. No need, really. I've heard this a thousand times already. Absolutely no unnecessary risks. Take care of yourself. Okay. He goes over my papers one more time and says on the desk. Obviously, can't. Good. That's it then. Come meet me if you ever need something. I mushered out before I even realized. A quick visit indeed. I end up standing in front of the main building and the, and the auxiliary. Although, to my eyes, they still looked one and the same. It's the first real look I get at the other students, so I watch people coming out of the school, going towards the gate or the dorms. Everyone seems to know where they're And I still keep thinking, most of them don't look too special for being students <coughs> at a special school. Then again, neither do I. <coughs> Does that make me one of them? 
that make me one of them. One of us. I should go somewhere too. Prevent me from lost. It's around dinner time, but I feel tired instead of hungry. <laughs> Weariness in me only grows. I trudge towards the dorms, at a little way apart from the main building complex. There is a garden of sorts. <coughs> Rubbery, flowers, that overbearing smell of fresh cut grass, that atmosphere. It dawns on my tired mind that the smell feels novel because I haven't been outside at all for so The dorm building is big, <clears throat> made of red brick, like the others, feels way too pompous, <clears throat> or what is, but I push forward, going inside. It takes more time than necessary to fish out the key I was given from my pocket. Room 119. Despite the ornate exterior, the inside of the dorm is a fairly new, functional, and boring. Just like in the main building, halls and doors are wide to accommodate wheelchairs. Same goes for the elevator and to the hallways. Poke my head around the corner of the common room door. Inside a few students are watching the television. One nods and gives a quick hello before turning back to the Seems that only the girls around here are sociable. I suppose that's perfectly fine with me. I climb the stairs to the upper floor. Here, small corridors branch off from the main hallway. Each of these minor halls have toilet and shower. And halfway down the hall, I spy room 119. Nameplate on the room, adjacent to mine. I guess there are just two of us here. Light shrines from below the door of room 117. Why knock lightly? Hello? Anyone home? From inside, I hear a few movements. Picking of way more locks than I thought these doors. After a moment, the door squeaks. A bespectacled, bespectacled boy standing in the doorway. He is looking at me very intently, looking through his extremely thick eyeglass. Who is it? Blind? No, at least not completely. But he have eyeglasses. He leans closer to me. Are almost touching. That's stink garlic. Sal Nakai, moving into the next room. I should enter. Face suddenly brightens and hands back upright, thrusting his hand out, smiling greeting, almost straight to my diaphragm. Oh. What's up, dude? Kenji. Uh, hi. Take Kenji's sweaty hand and sh feel a little rattled by the sudden change of attitude. He meant welcome. There were some suspicious looking people going in and out of your room earlier. It was probably my parents. Sure. It could have been some other people, too. You can't judge a book by its cover. His out of place proverb is left hanging between. Awkwardly, trying to think of some way to respond. I'd say the chances are high enough. He shudders and makes some exaggerated hand gesture. You're a brave man, Hassel. Me? I don't think I could trust the chances. The only one I trust is myself. I mean, I shouldn't get to know you either? He thinks about this for a while. Wise decision. Damn, you are smarter than you look. Probably. What do you look like? Hope not smart. He squints his eyes and leans closer again. I lean backwards to dodge it. Never mind, it doesn't matter. Then he turns, fumbles around for a moment, starts at the door handle, and shuts the door behind him. I slide my key into the lock of the door. Bleak beige wall, white linen, a desk made of some type of light wood, ugly curtains. It's no one's room. Personal. My hospital room. Bags are sitting at the foot of my bed. I did this morning. The closet is sitting open, stocked with my clothes. Also, it seems that there are a number of school uniforms hanging in there as well. 
A note is pinned to the sleeve of one of the- Hi, Chan. We've unpacked your things and made your bed. Said if these don't fit, then you go to the office tomorrow. Any problems, you can always call us. Love, Mom and Dad. Well, at least I don't have to worry about unpacking. I kind of hoped I would have, that there would have been something to do. It's still too early. I put the note down on the desktop. Lay down, bed feeling. Lying there makes me, but I have nothing. I wonder if the hospital condition in me for wanting to read whenever I, I have nothing to do. Restless urge just keeps growing until I have to stand up. Maybe it's stress or something. I was pretty nervous about it before coming, and for the entire day, I still, still am. Damn, I have to distract myself somehow, so I Tomorrow, go borrow some books from the library. Do that. But for now, the bottle of medication neatly arranged on my night table catch my eye. Pick up one and shake it just to hear the contents rattle inside and then read the glue pharmacy label. Sound Akai. Two tablets daily to stay alive. It doesn't really say that, but it could just as well. Kinda twisted having your life dependent on chemicals like I resent the little. What choice do I have? With a sign, I begin my new daily ritual of taking the right number of pills in each bottle. Be careful to check the correct dosages. I lie down again, feeling hollow and uncertain. After that, I keep starting, keep staring at the blank, unfamiliar ceiling for a long time. Doesn't start looking any more familiar, not even after darkness falls, long shadows draw across my room like vanity. The sheets feel slightly more warm and nest like it passes from temperature here. Soon the lighter shade of darkness feeling like every scene it becomes the only thing I recognize. Night beckons me to sleep and I feel the coldness of unfamiliarity fear creeping up my spine once again. Keep drifting further away from the world. wake up in a strange room. Solid morning light shimmers against the light gray ceiling. I had forgotten to draw the curtains close. I... This is my room. It's the third room this year that I'm supposed to call mine. Various things around here remind me who was supposed to be the one living here. My bags on the floor, my new school books on the desk, my numerous medications on the night table. I stare at the bottles for deliberating until I open a bottle, take out a pill, and pop out a tablet from a foil sheet. Down them with a cha chaser of water without thinking about the chemistry. My uniforms are in the closet. I slink out from under the sheets and stretch my bed or dress. Putting on a new school uniform feels like dressing in someone else's clothes. The artificial smell of generic detergent invades my nose, but the feeling of fresh clothes against my back is a good one. Natural one. Feels like a school uniform, as it should. Not much different from what I used to wear. That goes for other things too. So far this place seems more or less like a normal school. Except for the people. I think back to my talk with Kenji yesterday. Isha's constant, constant laughter and Tune's sweeping sign language gestures. Well, I've only met three students so far. Maybe they aren't that normal. But I'm sure others are. 
Or perhaps people like them are what passes for normal. What does pass for normal? Two people do. I didn't see a lot of kids hanging around after class yesterday. Maybe there are clubs. So, I wonder if I should join. All through class, the question remains on my mind. I decided to ask Kazune about it, and we split into groups. After all, she did say if I had anything I wanted to know, I should ask her. Dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. She crosses her arms and shifts her gaze slowly, who looks more preoccupied with trying to grind the eraser and pencil down so that the top is perfect and evenly flat. Dot dot dot. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Sichan. There's something you wanted from me? Oh. E. That's a good question, Hichi. My first thought is that means she doesn't know, which is worrying. Maybe I'm being too negative. Well, anyway, Isha, please don't prove me, right? Dot, dot, dot. Oh, that's right. Everyone is encouraged to join a club. A lot of people do so because there isn't really anything else to do. There are also school events like the festival festival coming up in a few days. Most every student in the school tends to help out with whatever. So, you actually transferred and at a busy time. Maybe you can help out too. Sure. What's the festival about? Misha freezes. Wah ha 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 ha. I don't know, Hachan. The truth is, it's a local event and I'm not from the area, so... Starts signing desperately, to asking her to bail her out. Shune adjusts her glasses at the end of an oddly grandois, grandios, or starts being hard and heavy. Dot dot. Huh? Oh. Who cares? Nisha puffs out her chest as she shows Shune's words at me with a disproportionate amount of pride. Too loud, I can see heads turning to look in our direction. Not so loud. 